Okay, let's do it. Okay, we're live. I see that we're live. So hi, everybody. I know it'll take a minute to get some of you to join, but for those watching the replay, we're just going to dive right in. So welcome, welcome to our panel discussion today. I'm really excited to be here. This is a first for me to talk to groomers. I've talked to a lot of other pet professionals, but this is the first I've had the chance to talk with groomers and see a little bit more about their business and what they do to help their pets thrive in their grooming business. So we've got three very special guests today. I'm going to start with LJ. I see your name or your face Hi. first. So LJ, give everybody a wave and say hello, Hi. and we'll have her do a proper introduction here shortly. And then Tracy, you're right beneath me and on my screen. I think it's the same for everybody else. Do you want to wave and say hi? Hello. Tracy, hello. Are you at home or are you at work right now? Are you I'm grooming home, right now? Actually. You're at home. Okay. I was like, if you're grooming, show us. Show us the pets. There you go. <laughs> so great, great. Okay. And then Katie, we have Katie. There's Katie waving. Hi. And Katie's at home too. I know that you had a pooch close by a second ago. So maybe we'll get to see another cameo. Good dog. My name is Trisha Deming. I'm not a groomer, but I'm here just to facilitate the discussion. So I just want to kick us off and get us started so you can get to know these wonderful, amazing ladies right out of the gate. So I first want to just have everybody introduce themselves. We already heard your name, but say your name again, where you're from, and how long you've been a groomer. So who wants to go first? I can go. So Great. hi, everyone. Um, my name's LJ Thornsbury. I and from Scottsdale, Arizona, and the owner of Quick Paws Grooming. I've been grooming for about eight years, and most recently in the last three years, um, I've been a house call model, so I'm a little bit different than some of the stuff you might see where people have the mobile vans or um, they're in a shop. I'm fear-free certified and actually groom pets in clients' homes, so I have a little bit different of like a client relationship than you might have in a shop. Very cool. That's cool. That's good. I haven't heard that before. So you're like you said, it's a little bit different than the mobile, similar, but also those that are very anxious and don't want to ever leave their house. That's ideal. You're ideal for them. That's great. Okay. Who's next? Who wants to tell us next? I'll go. I'm Tracy Holmes. I live in Roy, Utah. Um, I have been a groomer for almost 16 years and I actually now work at a vet office. So that is a little different um, than where I've been in the past. And, but yeah, it works well. Good, good. So, okay, LJ, you were eight years. And Tracy, what'd you say, 16 years? Mm -hmm. 16 years. Okay, very cool. In a vet clinic now. Great, great. Thank you. All right, Katie, bring us home. I feel super old because I'm like, my birthday's tomorrow and I'll be 42 and I've been grooming since I was 15. So <laughs> that's like 20 something years, 29 years. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> how did you know? And happy birthday. Yeah, happy Thanks. birthday. I'm on Thank Monday, you. so I'm right behind you. Oh, yay. <laughs> happy birthday. Um, so I've done, like, I've been, I started grooming with my mom, so we were in just our own personal shop, and I was the head groomer at Petco for a few years. Um, now I just do it out of my home in Brigham City, Utah, and I don't have to deal with any clients that I don't want to anymore. <laughs> so, so nice. That is great. That's the beauty of sticking with it long enough. You can decide who you want to work for, yes. right? Yes. Oh, that's great. Okay, good. Good. So my next question then, what are the issues you typically see in your in your facilities, wherever it is you groom? What is it that you're typically seeing as a groomer that these pets come to you and they might have an issue or two? What are those issues? Long hair can be one of them. Tangles, matted, but I'm talking about a little bit deeper issues in that, maybe skin. Tell us some of the issues you see on a regular basis. If any of you can start. I see a lot of, um, a lot of allergy skin, um, kind of greasy, smelly skin that has some, um, it just, it tends to get like a, a, a grease to it, a creamy grease. It's really a weird stuff, um, that comes with allergies a lot. And I get that. I deal with a lot of allergy ears gross really 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 dirty ears and um yeah and like different things like schnauzer bumps and skin bumps and whatnot so okay that's what you see the most great mm -hmm. perfect what else what else do you guys see katie lj who wants to go next yeah i'll go um i'm naturally obsessed with ears and teeth and so i pay a lot of attention to those um i always tell my clients if, that, if something is going on in the ears help a lot of ear infections. Um, and then teeth, I'm always looking at like deciduous teeth or um, the gum line and recommending either dentals or brushing or dental sticks to follow up with that. 
um, yeah, skin issues. I'm also really into nutrition. And so when I see a really fat dog, then I have that conversation about how to have better health and how to take better care of their body. So love it. So overweight dogs too. That's a great one. I hadn't thought about that one, but I'm sure you see that a lot. Dogs that have a hard time on the table, getting off the table, you lifting the dog off the table, like this should not be this hard. Standing. Just yeah. standing. That's a good one. You're right. Yeah. And anxiety. I mean, anxiety. like my dog, I was just showing you guys, <laughs> I told you he hates being on the table. So CBD chews are magical in helping all of these anxious dogs. Awesome. Okay, good. Good. We'll get into that in a minute. I'll ask a little bit more about this particular products that you love to yeah. recommend. So LJ, what about you? What do you see? It I might be different. For me, like I see impacted anal glands all the time. So that's a really big thing that I notice, at least in my business. And then anxiety is like a huge thing. And that might just be because of the grooming niche that I'm in being fear free certified I kind of like draw in those type of dogs. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of things that we can do to help mitigate that. Love it. Okay, good, good. Those are the things I would imagine too. Anxiety, that's the groomers that I've worked with and had relationships with. That's typically what they see. It's anxiety, probably number one, but skin issues, ear issues, the anal glands. I hear that a lot too. And uh, the teeth, that's a good one, Katie. I hadn't thought about that, that you're noticing the key, the teeth and, and seeing what they look like. So that's good. Okay. So how has adding, so Patri, you're here, you know, you were invited here today as a groomer to watch this or watch the replay because someone thought, Hey, you know, we, we know groomers that are doing this, they're implementing our products into their grooming practice and it's helping pets. It's helping their own pets. It's helping clients, pets. And so I'm just curious, you know, what have you guys seen as you've recommended some of these products that either maybe tell us one of your favorite testimonials of a pet you've helped, or what are the products that you love to recommend and what do they help with? I know that's kind of several questions, but you can pull one of them, pull one of them out of that hat and see which one you want to answer. So either a favorite testimonial, but a product that's really made a difference in your grooming, in your grooming practice. Well, I don't oh. <laughs> Sorry. The all three of you are me, me, me. I think for me, like Gastro Pro Plus has actually been like integral in what I recommend to my clients a lot of the times, especially when we see gland issues and tell me they're out scooting a lot. We know as groomers, we don't want to be expressing glands on a regular basis too frequently because then they can cause more issues. So what I'll do is like when it's time to check out and you're talking about like the report for your dog for the visit, you can bring up something like, you know, I have this product that a lot of my other clients have tried and I've seen it personally resolve many anal gland issues. So I'll recommend Gastro Pro Plus. I'll tell them that I will send them a text message with the, the link and a coupon code to buy. And it usually works out pretty good. I used to give out business cards for it, but people would lose them and then be texting me and try to find that out. So I just kind of like direct it right to the point. Um, at the same time, when you're, when you're talking, you're building that relationship with your clients, a lot of times they'll just offhandedly ask you for recommendations for certain things. So that's another way in which you can talk about what you have to offer through Pawtree um, and how you can be their one-on-one -on -one support specifically for that issue as well. Love it. Yeah. The one-on-one -on -one support. That's huge. I was just helping a client yesterday. Again, I'm not a groomer, but I still have clients, you know, people that buy products from me and one, I handed her this bag with all these instructions of what she should do. And I'm like, you can't get that at PetSmart. You can only get that from a pet pro. So love it. That's a great, that one-on-one -on -one is just pivotal. Very, 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 very great point. So, okay, Katie, you can go next. And then Tracy, I know you, everybody really jumped in at the same time. <laughs> we'll let you go next. And then Tracy. Yeah, definitely the one-on-one. -on -one. Since I have people coming to my house, I don't have like, you know, a busy grooming shop. So I can take the time um, to talk to them about stuff and, just like LJ was saying, it's just that like, hey, I noticed this issue. Um, here's an opportunity for you to fix this before you go to the vet type of a thing. Um, my most successful, like my most successful, most recent thing happened. I got this golden, um, big golden dog. They rescued it from their, their um, sister. It was 85 pounds. No, it was 115 pounds. Oh. Okay. And so we talked about nutrition and she was just like, Katie, I just need direction. Like I haven't had a dog before. And this dog I can tell is very overweight, overweight. like she's really stiff joints, all of this stuff. And so last October, I um, got her on Pawtree and she has done nothing else. Like 
because the dog hasn't been able to like walk or run or like do anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I saw her last month and she left here and went to the vet and texted me back. And she was like, Katie, she has lost 30 pounds in five months. And she was like, she's running and barking at the neighbors and not like the best behavior. But like, she was like, yes, she's a dog again. She's and, a dog. And it was only changing the food. Like, honestly, she did nothing else but change the food. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's just amazing that we can take all of that pressure off the joints, um, just get that dog healthy inside and out just by giving better nutrition. I love wow. that. I do too. Cause think of the alternative going to the vet every couple of weeks. Like this isn't working. This isn't working. We've tried this. We've tried this. So one simple fix, simple. I mean, that's a simple, that's an investment in your pet, right? Investing in your pet. What a great yeah, testimony. Let me share another you. quick story. Like I had another golden doodle on my table and she was just like so anxious and I trained this dog. And so I knew her. Um, and so just a quick like selling thing is she was on the table and I just called her mom and said, Hey, can I give her a CBD? Which, you know, groomers, everybody always thinks that we have all of these drugs to knock dogs out. Like <laughs> we don't have drugs. <laughs> okay. And so I called and said, Hey, can I give her a CBD too? And we waited for 30 minutes. You know, I kept like doing some things, but her whole demeanor changed within that 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. I was able to groom her without all of the stress that she was experiencing. Uh, when her mom came to pick her up, she got in the car and while I was talking to the mom about stuff, she went to sleep and her mom was like, holy cow, Katie, like she has never, ever done this before. And she went home and ordered CBD chews for all of our future visits. So uh -huh. it's as easy as that is like your dog had this problem. This is how we addressed it, you know, with your permission, if it's needed. Um, and here's what I recommend for you. And they're like, okay, you're my groomer. And this is what happened. And this is like, your credibility just holds so much in the products you recommend. And it's pretty easy because they work. Love it. Love it. Similar to what LJ said, you know, it doesn't have to be that hard. It's like, I send you a text. This is what some of my clients have used and love. And this is what I've used and loved. And here's a link, like it or not, it's not forcing them to do anything. It's giving them options, right? Giving them options yes. that they didn't know about before. Love it. Oh, that's great. All right, Tracy, you ready? So I have two. I have two. So one, I have a dog that was just allergy ridden, just allergies, major allergies. Um, and they kept telling me, you know, I mean, oh, we go to the vet, we're going to the vet. And we're, you know, he's been on, on all these different medicines and they've, they've done the, the different medicated um, baths that you have to do like four times a week. And, mm -hmm. um, and it was a cocker, which is kind of known to have allergy skin allergies anyways and whatnot and um she was at wit's end at wit's end going to like like talking about even putting the dog down because that dog was so bad and um they switched food over to pottery and cleared right up wow i mean this dog still has seasonal allergies you know whatnot but the skin allergies are gone but went from like, I don't know if this is going to, if anything's going to work, we, we maybe just put this dog out of its misery yeah, yeah, exactly. to like, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. just, yeah. And it was almost getting too expensive for him. Kind of, you know, they just kept feeling mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just, it's, and it's not doing anything good. It's, she doesn't, does she have a quality of life? Does she, you know, and, um, and yeah, to, wow. you know, we're at the vet all the time. And, um, the, it was kind of funny because the, the husband was complaining about the price of the food and the wife was like, well, let's, let's add up some vet bills and Seriously? see, and cause and a lot of it was, there was not feeding a good quality of food to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but yeah, they're best wake of, of age um, a while ago, but, but the but, quality of life, we those got last... a few years oh, yeah, it, that's and amazing. it was really cool because the dog used to hate the grooming process because it would, as I was trying to get the hair off, you know, I'd always have to pre-shave it. And then I'd have to soak my blades because the, they were, the skin was so gross. And um, then I'd bathe it and get the medicated shampoo soaking in it and whatnot to get all that stuff up. And then it would just like the whole second shave, it'd be like, oh, you know, and, and scabs and whatnot. And it was just... Dog didn't care much for it. I mean, I think it felt good, but at the same time, it bugged you know their skin. Yeah. And so it was it was a pretty cool, pretty cool um, one. And you know, at the time, I I just head palm because I didn't take pictures. I didn't even think. Oh, I was just so excited about the change 
and it became so quickly that it was almost n normal. Wow. You know, so that was one. Another one I just barely had the other day. Um, one of my clients, in fact, I don't, I didn't even remember giving her, her dog has always had ear infections. I, once again, I forgot about it. Um, and I got a text from her and she's like, do you have any ear wash and dry? I just went onto the website and they're out. My sister's dog is having major ear infection like Sally was way back when. Do you by chance have any that I can get from you? I don't care if it's a half a bottle, a quarter of a bottle. Do you have any? I'm like, you know, I actually do because I'm kind of addicted <laughs> <laughs> to clean ears and I am addicted to our ear wash and dry. And so I always have like four or five bottles around. Um, and so she's like, can you bring it to me when you, you know, when do you work next? And so I'll be taking that to her tomorrow. Um, yeah. and I'd forgotten that Sally used to have bad ears because her ears have been so good. I, I just now, like within the last month, started using the ear wash, ear dry in my business because I was very like, I'm just going to buy it by the gallon. Like this stuff can't be that much better until my dog had mm -hmm. awful ears from swimming the first time this season mm -hmm. and it cleared up literally overnight and I've been using them in Cocker Spaniel ears. Yes. Like, I don't use them on in everybody at work because it is pricey. They need it. Yeah. You know, but I do. And it's, it's crazy because... You put, a, you put it in, you know, I'll put like the regular stuff in and I do all the same thing and you get it out and it's like, oh, there's a little, it's dirty, you know? And then you put ours in, our ear wash in. And, and it you sucks it out like a it in, And it's like, where did all of this gunk come from? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's some, some mornings when, you know, you wake up and your ears are itchy, allergies, whatever. I'm like, I'm going to put that stuff in my ear. I want it all out. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Right? Return and report. We want to hear it. <laughs> you know, I use, I use the flea and tick on me. I might as well use ear wash and dry, right? <laughs> I use anyway. that too. But yeah. I love that because it does, it's, it's the coolest thing to watch and see how much more stuff you get out of that. And there's, and I mean, I've saved, you know, ears that were kind of on their way to getting infected. You know, they were just maybe oh. dirtier. And I really, it's like when they come in four weeks, six weeks, they didn't have an infection in there. So mm -hmm. I really, in the past, I have seen when I didn't get them as clean oh, or, so or you didn't put the ear dry in because, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't, I didn't have it or whatever. So I really swear by this stuff. Ear wash and dry. It's one of your favorites. And now LJ is like a recent convert to the yeah. <laughs> ear wash and dry country five years and I was like I don't need that but now I see the difference so I think it's interesting like when we get really attached to certain products that yeah. have worked really well for us or our customers mm -hmm. we kind of like stay in our bubbles sometimes but mm -hmm. I'm really happy Amber got me on my bubble yeah because good. Good. <laughs> you've seen a difference you've seen a difference even with your like, a new like a new passion a new thing to share Love it. Love it. So yes, yeah, see, we're getting some comments in Facebook too. Ear, ear wash and dry is amazing. Our trooper had bad ears. I started using pottery and now no more infections. Another one said, when is it coming back? I actually didn't know it was out of stock. Is that a recent thing? Did it just barely? Yeah, just a couple weeks. Just barely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, funny that we're talking about it. now, like, sorry guys, we're talking about this amazing product. You're going to have to <laughs> wait for a day to get, <laughs> but I'll, um, we'll have to look and see when that's coming back. Cause I, I think that would be good to know, but um, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite products as well. Our dog has only been on a prescription once and never again, because they, they gave it to us. They said, you need this. And after trying it, I'm like, this isn't really working. And so we've only used ours. Ours is really prone to ear infections and we love our ear wash and dry. And it lasts forever too. Like if you use it regularly, it's, it's something that you don't need to use daily necessarily. And so it lasts a lot longer. So I'm a fan. I'm a big raving fan too. So, and I did forget to ask how long everybody has been with Pottery. So LJ, you said five years, right? Mm -hmm. Tracy, you're eight. It's been eight years or seven. Um, when did we start? <laughs> I came in it? November of the, of the year that we opened. Okay. That's what I thought. Like it's probably getting close to eight years. Oh, in okay. November, it'll be eight years for you. And then Katie, how long have you? Three? It'll be three years this July? No, just one. What? What? Yeah. One. I can't believe that. It is legacy to legacy. So legacy is when I join. Okay, no way. Okay, I thought it'd been longer than that. Like, I'm just losing track of time. That's cool. <laughs> we got someone that said, Steph said, Woody needs a CBD with the ear wash and dry. Yes, yeah, CBD. You've heard that brought up today too. An amazing product that helps with that anxiety. So that's great. 
Is there anything else that you that would spark? I've, I've been I've gotten a couple of my clients now on the core four because um, it just helps with everything. You know, Tell a little bit about the core four, just briefly. Core four is is um, okay. I have to think about. So it's salmon oil. It is Gastro Pro Joint Support, and then the CBD Mega. And I, you know, they, they kind of pushed that out legacy. And I've I've used all the products, sometime, you know, with it's all something. the dogs I have. I have like six personal dogs, and then a couple other dogs that are not mine. Um, plus my daughter's dogs are here. So I have used it something, you know, I've got a 12 year old dog and she was getting the joint support and, and the CBD was going, you know, kind of as needed. And, um, and I got some other dogs that have got, you know, just different things. They were getting all gastro pro for the most part and, and salmon oil for the most part, you know, but, and when we just learned about let's do reactive instead of, or proactive instead of reactive. And let's get some of these here issues beforehand, before they start, um, like joints, you know, let's save that precious joint tissue. And um, instead of waiting until we're bone on bone, I wish I'd done that years ago when my bones were, you know, and I'm, I have, I'm bone on bone on my knees. And, um, and so I have started giving joint support, uh, you know, to my, my babies. Now I've got a two, two year olds and, um, and all my dogs get joint support and this, the, the, the CBD mega, all my dogs now get the CBD mega. And so it's just kind of helping them to stay out of the vet as much. And, you know, my dogs really, I mean, knock on wood, unless they're sick, my dogs don't go to the vet, you We're know, the I mean, like right now I've got a little girl who's got pancreatitis and, you know, some other health issues that we can't, you know, it's, but, um, but and I just got her a few years ago too, so I'm dealing with some previous health issues with her. But my dogs don't have a lot of the the health issues because I'm I'm on these things and, and the proactive and, and and I see it. It's it's great. My um I've got Labradors and Golden Retrievers, and my labs don't shed that much. I mean, I wish I could bring them in here, but my office is a mess over there, so they can't come in right now. Um, but my, my labs, I mean, yeah, they shed, but you know, when you're rubbing, I've got two that are therapy dogs and we don't get the big handfuls of hair by the end of the day. It used to be like, I would take a rag and wipe all the hair off from people petting them, you know, just because we're out and about and they've been just newly bathed and I don't have to do yeah. that anymore. That's so it's great. crazy. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't groove my own dogs at home. You know, yeah, LJ was saying that too. She's like, forget it. I, I do not yeah. brush my dogs. Everybody's like, oh, you just brush them a lot. Nah, nope. no, no, that's agree. the last thing I want to do. Even my standard yeah. poodle doesn't get brushed that much. That's yeah, that's <laughs> exactly what LJ was saying. Well, we have another great question that I want to because we're we're getting close to the end of the time, and this is a question I had, and it's popped up in the chat too. How has Patry changed or helped your grooming business? How has that helped you? How has it helped your business? How has it helped your clients? Any of those, we'd love to hear answers to that. So. For to... me, I think that Pottery, like not only like my clients before I was with Pottery would ask my recommendation on things, but I think it also just like helps you build that client relationship. They already trust you, their dog, when it comes to their grooming. They're going to trust you when it comes to asking you other things and like that have to do with their life. So when we're able to help them solve a problem, that's not only going to make them raving fans of you for groomings, make them raving fans of you for pretty much anything pet related. And then at the same time, you have a way to, to leverage, at least for me, like, we all know that this is very labor intensive of a job to say the least. And like, pottery, I've gotten to a point where I make the same in my pottery business as I do in my grooming business. So I don't have to take on as many dogs and push myself to burn out. So the animals that I am working with get the absolute best care, they get more of my time and attention. And I'm able to do that because I don't feel like I have to take on as more than what you really can handle. Cause I feel like as groomers, a lot of us have done that in the past where we're like, especially at Christmas, can I do 15 poodles in a day? Like we've done it like, but you don't have to. So, and you can give that utmost care and you'll have that waiting list for people to come um, to get on your schedule and things like that. But at the same time, like you're making a big difference, not only in your clients, but you're, you're helping yourself financially at the same time um, and being authentic doing it. 
I, I love that. I think you hit on so many keys. Being authentic is is just so, per, you know, that's what we want to hear. That's that's what I think makes this more appealing to others. But also to recognize that, yeah, your backs, your carpal tunnel, there's so many things you could or might face if you just work yourself to the bone. And so the fact that you've been able to cut back and really give the best care, what a great testimonial. Who else wants to add on? I don't mean to cut short. I just think you hit on a lot of good points. So great job. I'll go. I totally agree with what LG just said. Um, my clients, because it is in my home, my clients are my friends. And so like, I'm facing this, like, I want to stop grooming, but like, they're all my friends and I care about them and I care about their dog. Um, so it's hard to tell your friends no. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's personal. Like they ask you, they trust you. Um, they really care and they're ready to listen because they know your experience in the field and, and they trust you to have their best intentions. And so like I'm able to provide even just having that CBD on the shelf that I'm able to help that dog through the appointment. Um, without Pottery, I wouldn't have ever touched CBD or like even known how to give any of that stuff. And, and so be able to help the dogs be better. Like I talked about that dog losing all of that weight, like that's just incredible um, to improve their quality of life. And so having some of those products on hand that I'm able to just like, here, here's a sample, make sure your dog likes the food before you spend money on it. You know, um, it's totally changed my business and my ability to help pets. Love it. Oh, that's so great. We have one more question, Tracy, you might have an answer to that too, but I want to make sure we get this question as well. Uh, but one person asked how, um, sorry, Oh, where did it go? Do you carry products and sell okay, them? No, I was just going to, I was going to say that one. I was just okay, good. The best thing yeah. about paw tree is we don't have to carry the products. Um, I know a lot of groomers carry food in their stores or in their shops and they lose money because you've got to rotate your stock and you, it'll get expire and you know, whatever. And they, they lose money. Plus they lose grooming space because you've got to have shelves for it and whatnot. And we don't, I don't, I, I have a booklet of, in fact, I just made a new one that's about, about to print right now um, with just all of our products in it. And I have the booklet there. And, and if anybody asks about it, or if I have questions or, you know, talk to me about it, I can just refer them to that and then tell them how to order it. So it goes straight to their door. So we don't have to hold to carry product. And I love that because I don't have to worry about it. Um, working at a vet office, my vets are not, they're, they're not anti, but they're not for it either. Cause of course they sell their own stuff. Um, so I don't have to compete with that. And it just makes it so much easier because I don't have to worry about stock. I don't have to put any money, any of my money out forward for it at all. See, and I totally go, I have product on hand. Um, I had a lady who sat down, it was my first time grooming her. She was in town. Um, but she bought like allergy pills and she bought an ear wash and dry. Like she spent a lot of money because I had it right there. Um, and then like the shea butter, if I ever, if there's like razor burn or if I just notice some dry spots or something, I send that home with them and then they bring it back their next appointment. So I kind of have rotating things. I do. I do. Um, a little or I'll give like, I that. use it and we'll give it. Yeah. But... So just some, like, yeah, I'm not holding on to bags of food or anything to sell to people, but I certainly have extra bags because some people around here are like, well, I didn't get my order in time and I don't want to go get another food. I'm like, I would much rather give you half a gallon of food and have you stay on pottery and keep your dog consistent than have you go off of it and then back on it. And, you know, like just that inconsistency. So I definitely have some product, but not a huge inventory. But that's a great perspective. You hear both sides. You can or you can't. LJ, go ahead. Go ahead. I actually yeah. don't carry any at all. Like I'll have a jar of CBD mega in my kit, just like Kate was saying, like, so you can use it in the event you need to use it. Um, but normally I don't carry anything at all. Okay, good. So perspective from all angles. You can if you want to, yeah. you don't have to, you know, some things are nice on hand, but you don't have to. So love that there's different perspectives. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. And somebody said, is this a book that you made or ordered through Pottery? I'm going to say you made it, right, Tracy? So yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, you can print out all the... I, I just printed out everything and I just, yeah, I just printed it out. Um, and I'm, I had it printed out. So it's just on thicker paper at a print shop. And then I go through and put it in, um, pay, you know, protectors. Yeah, and, that's uh, what I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I just, Man, I'm not a groomer, but it really helps updated. to have these sheets. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Since we've updated, um, it has all the prices on it, everything. And so, yeah, I just, 
and it just makes it so much easier because you've got everything right there to talk about it's the same one i well i have one for work and i have one for my events that i do so the last i want to ask one more question and if there are other questions pop them in the chat because we definitely want to make sure for those groomers out there watching we want to make sure we're answering questions you might have but the one question that i wanted to at least end with or or ask was what would you tell some of the other groomers that are here considering it like what would what's the one thing you would say to them about pottery i myself am so kind of touching on like you said i'm kind of i'm, I'm gonna be 53 on monday and I'm not young anymore. And, you know, grooming, I've been grooming for not as long as some, but it is, it's, it's killing my body. I love it. I don't want to ever quit, but I'd like to be able to just kind of get down to do friends and families and my own dogs. Um, but pottery is a way to, it's, it's bringing me out of having to groom all the time. Plus, if you can get your clients on it, it's kind of like, you know, we're artists. And um, we put we put our art on the canvas that's given us. But if you've got a really nice canvas, your work looks so much better Absolutely. than a canvas that is crummy, you know. And if you can get your clients on it and um, see the, the, the difference in their skin and their hair and the the coloring of every of their skin, you know, just everything. It's it's a whole whole different ball game. And so I don't have to work so hard because the canvas is clean. I love that. That's a great point. That is great. Anything you want to add, Katie or LJ? What a great point. Yes. I was going to say like very similar to Tracy. Like I am, um, I'm only 33, but it's like, I'm thinking about like, as I age in this career, like what can I do? So pottery has really become more of my retirement, even though I don't need it like right now. So I know whenever that time comes that I need to take a step back, that I'm not scrambling to find another career. Like right. I already have myself set. I'm in a business space that I like to be in. And then at the same time, we are helping our current clients right now with what they need. So you build that relationship all the way around. So if you ever have to leave the industry, maybe you get injured or something like that, you still have your client base. You're not losing them. You just have them on the back end with Pottery. Love that. Yeah, and you said, great like, I would just sum that up as security, pottery security, because you don't know, like with COVID, right? We were all wiped out <laughs> unless you have like creative ways to groom. Um, and pottery is steady, like dogs and cats need to eat every single month. And so it's just been a great security. And like LJ was saying, a great retirement. Like I am nearing up, like I want to be done grooming in five years. Um, and so I'm looking at, okay, how can I build my pottery business so that it can take over the income that I get from grooming. And I don't have to be like, oh, I make that decision. You know, like it's just, it's going to be an easier decision because I'll have the steady income. Well, and we all know, we all know that one person that, that somehow got injured at work and cannot groom mm -hmm. and they're scrambling to figure out, you know, they've had to go back to college, pay for college, find something different, do a less paying job, whatever it may be. And I used to really worry about that. And I just like, oh, well, I just won't work then. I don't know, you know, and just kind of know? try to put, put it out of my head. Um, but now I don't worry about that. If I, if that doesn't happen, you know what? I will just have more time to pump up into my pottery. And it's just, it's a whole huge stress relief to know that I've got something else that I love. Well, our industry is physical, right? Like groomers or vet techs, like it's all physical and we're all in this like pet industry because we love to be with animals. And so when you think of like, what else would I do? It's like, I don't know <laughs> because my entire life has been based on pets. And so it is really taking all of that expertise you learn along the way. Like I'm a groomer, I'm a vet tech, I'm a trainer, like so much other expertise. And then I can just throw that all into pottery and be like here without having to do anything physical. <laughs> right. Which I love. I love because LJ kind of said this, like you're all really just complimenting what everybody else said in a different way. So I love, I think that was the perfect question to end off because if, if a groomer watching this doesn't feel compelled to like have something that complements your business, you get to keep the clients in, in every way, shape and form. You know, if something did happen, you still have those clients as LJ said, that's what I was trying to say before, but it's just a, a, this was great. This was so great. I'm very, very grateful for your expertise, for you sharing what's working, what you love, how you're helping pets. I love the canvas, the idea of a canvas. Let's make that canvas even prettier. 
with, you know, having a good foundation of good health and, and you being able to add that to your, to your tool belt of what you offer. So any other parting thoughts? I mean, we're pretty much wrapped up, but anything else you guys want to add before we end the live? I would just say it's a no brainer. Do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Join like, you I would never, <laughs> like I would have never thought like I'd be in the position I am right now when I started this, but um Pottery has definitely just made such an impact in my overall like personal brand of being the dog lady that I don't think it'd ever go back. So I love it. Oh, see, that's cool too. That's really cool. And I think everybody here would agree, myself included. And I'm not a groomer and I still feel that way. I would never go back. I love it. So glad that I said yes as well. So thank you, each of you, for being here today. For those watching live and the replay later, we're, we're glad you were here. We hope you learned something. Get with the person that invited you here to this tonight and just get some more questions answered if you have them or feel free to pop them in the chat here. We'll be watching and, and can answer questions later. But again, thank you, LJ. Thank you, Tracy. Right. Thank you, Katie. We appreciate you all. And we'll see you guys next time. We'll Thanks, see you. Thanks. Bye.